Hello, 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 and welcome once again to Movies That Pop. I'm the Colonel. Let's see what popped up in theaters all across the galaxy this week. Now, there's a reason this review is so late compared to my previous reviews. Well, it's later than most because most critics saw the movie and immediately made their reviews and posted them online over a week ago. It's later than most of the reviews that I post on my channel as well. And the reason for that is this. When I first walked out of my screening of Star Wars The Last Jedi on Thursday night, I was, for the first time, kind of unsure about how I felt about this latest Star Wars film. Not that I was unsure about whether or not it was a good movie, it is unquestionably, extraordinarily well made. From top to bottom, no, no, I was unsure about how I felt about The Last Jedi. I needed to ruminate on it, I needed to process it, and ultimately, I needed to see it twice. Now, The Last Jedi is unique in many ways, but one of its defining characteristics is that it will subvert, no, 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 defy your expectations at every turn. This is indeed not going to go the way you think, and the movie keeps you off balance, and I think this is where some of you may level your criticisms at it a bit unfairly, because it does not give you what you want. It doesn't give you what you speculated about for months. It does not present characters that you can easily predict the behavior of, even the ones that you've known for 40 some odd years now. Characters evolve in natural but off-putting ways. They make huge mistakes, sometimes egregious ones, and have lapses in good judgment. They even, though this is a little more subtle, may start to maybe fall in love with some characters other than the ones you've sort of been shipping them to fall in love with. And that's all I'm gonna say about that. In short, the characters, indeed, this whole movie, spent so much time giving me the feeling of, whoa, that just happened, that I didn't have time to determine how I felt about that thing happening before there was some other twist or revelation to process. Now that I've seen it a second time, knowing everything, how do I feel? Well, I'll tell you how I feel. I love it. I love it. I loved it even more than The Force Awakens, and I applaud The Last Jedi almost without reservation. Director Ryan Johnson has made a film that challenges you, pushes the story and the universe forward after a near eternity of these films looking backward, and absolutely does not play it safe. There were story elements here that I had issues with on first viewing, and those issues were nearly erased on my second viewing because once you know where the story is going, it tracks so much better. And more so than any other Star Wars movie, this is a film where shot composition is extremely important. Johnson and his collaborators, especially cinematographer Steve Gedlin, bring a whole lot of toys to this particular sandbox, and they really, really make the most of clashing them together. This movie uses deliberate camera setups and movement to tell the story in fresh ways, and as a result, they tell a story with more grandeur, more flair. The Force Awakens, I feel, really needed to go out of its way to look like a proper Star Wars movie, even to that movie's detriment by both the look and a lot of the plot elements being reminiscent of the original Star Wars trilogy. The Force Awakens really needed to get the audience's buy-in by playing things safe and welling up those feelings of nostalgia. Now, with that buy-in firmly established, Ryan Johnson and crew get to delight in knocking you back, giving you things like slow motion or Rashomon-like flashbacks from differing perspectives, some downright trippy visuals, and a wicked streak of silliness to keep you off balance and in a constant state of surprise. Gone are dependable tropes like the old serial camera wipes that Lucas preferred in his trilogy, and I can be sure, but I don't really think any character uttered the words, I have a bad feeling about this, in the whole movie. But, but you know what you do get? New, new, new. New droids, new alien characters, new planets, and even a new understanding of how the Force works, what it is, and what Force users are even capable of doing. Yes, there is a lag in the second act. There's one character I didn't like that much, but this time it's not a digital character like Jar Jar Binks. He's played by a human being, and I just didn't think he worked that well. But, but you know what? This plotline is one of the thousand risks that were taken in this film, and even though it didn't quite pay off, it was far easier to swallow and even enjoyable the second time around, especially when you know what it contributes to the movie's final scene and closing image. Mark Hamill and Carrie Fisher have simply never given better acting performances in their careers as Luke and Leia. Luke, in particular, cements his status as one of the best characters in cinema history with a brilliant and very moving story arc here. Kylo Ren and Rey also do have an amazing amount of literal and figurative heavy lifting here, and their individual journeys and the dynamic between them and the revelations for each of their characters are fascinating to behold. Poe Dameron has a great storyline here as well, one that I liked upon the first viewing, 
and I ended up loving on the second. And 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 this little guy, BB-8, continues his crawl up the charts, going after R2-D2 for the title of MVP Droid of the Century. Some of the things that this little guy comes up with to save the day are just, uh, they're just fantastic. Add to all of that some fun moments with fan favorites Chewbacca, C-3PO, and of course, these little babies. Eat your heart out, Ewoks. Ah! Let me also say that The Last Jedi really, really puts his characters through the ringer. Sure, one plot line is just one long, protracted, low-speed chase, while one party waits for the other party to run out of gas, and contains one element lifted from Battlestar Galactica, but I must tell you that I don't think the stakes have ever been higher for the Rebellion in any Star Wars movie. Never has there been such dwindling hope before, during, and after the plot of this movie has unfolded. For the first time since I can remember, I was actually scared. Not for the specific characters, but for the cause. When they tell you at the beginning how many actual ships and personnel that the Resistance has left, you really feel for each tiny death. There are some magnificent battle scenes in this movie. I mean, I've said before that Rogue One put the wars back in Star Wars, but The Last Jedi certainly keeps that going. But each time a Resistance ship is blown up, you really feel Right here, the loss of the cause, just getting decimated slowly, bit by bit. It's rousing in a way that the previous films haven't been, and that too is remarkable. Look, I did my best not to spoil anything for you here, despite the lateness of this review. After the first viewing, I was going to award The Last Jedi a large bag of popcorn. It's, it's got a couple of blows, a few obvious flaws in the storytelling, and a few characters and character moments that I didn't quite jive with all the way. But this movie has such outrageously high highs, such rewarding surprises, and such impressive craftsmanship, and I'll just say it, this movie has some stones, man. Some absolute ballsy ways to tell this story that I, that I just can't. Hey, little fella. I, I just can't. I can't. I can't even look at this little guy and honestly say that this isn't an extra large bag of popcorn. Rah! Especially after a second viewing. So go see The Last Jedi. See it on a big screen, then see it again. The Force Awakens may have played it safe, but The Last Jedi takes risks and changes the Star Wars universe irrevocably and definitely for the better. That does it for this edition of Movies That Pop. Don't forget to follow me, the Colonel, on Twitter at Movies That Pop. And click the icon right down there to visit our channel if you'd like to see more. And support us, please, by clicking subscribe while you're there and by clicking the thumbs up icon below. Now, I would like to hear your thoughts on The Last Jedi in the comments as well, so let's mix it up in there. But I think at this point, after opening weekend has passed, then it's probably okay to talk in detail, so spoiler-averse people, beware down there. In the meantime, thanks for watching, I'm the Colonel, and this movie is not gonna go the way you think.